In the first example we have, we want to find the interval of convergence. And here we have the series n times x to the n over 4 to the n times n squared plus 1. Notice we have a variable x in this one. So this series is going to converge dependent upon the values we assign x. So let's take uh, the ratio test. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of the n plus 1th term. So we have n plus 1, x to the n plus 1, all over 4 to the n plus 1 times n plus 1 squared plus 1. Now normally we would divide by the nth term. We're still going to do that, but since, since this is a fraction, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So we have 4 to the n times n squared plus 1 over n times x to the n. And now we have the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of, let's see, we have x to the n plus 1 over x to the n, so when we subtract, we're just going to have x on top. So we've taken care of the x's. How about the 4's? We have 4 to the n over 4 to the n plus 1. The n's will cancel and we'll have a 4 in the denominator. And then all of the n's pretty much just stay the way they are. So we have n plus 1 times n squared plus 1 over n times n plus 1 squared plus 1. Well, that's equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of just x over 4 times 1. Because uh, we, we'll have an n to the third on the top, we'll have an n to the third on the bottom, and both of the coefficients will be 1. So now x over 4 needs to be less than 1 for this original series to converge. So we can write negative 1 is less than x is less than 1. Well, that's over 4 still. And then we multiply everybody by 4, and we get negative 4 less than x is less than 4. So there's the interval of convergence so far. But series can fail to converge at their endpoints. So now we have to check the endpoints. And we're going to start out by checking uh, the endpoint negative 4. So we have x equal to negative 4. And if we plug negative 4 into the original series, see if I can leave that up there, we have n equals 0 to infinity of n times four, uh, negative 4. Negative 4 to the n over 4 to the n times n squared plus 1. Well, we can rewrite this as the following. n equals 0 to infinity of negative 4 over 4 to the n, because both of these, the 4 and the negative 4, are both to the nth power, and then times n over n squared plus 1. Well, that's equal to sigma n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times n over n squared plus 1. Well, now that's an alternating series. So we have to see if the series converges or diverges as an alternating series. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of n over n squared plus 1. And that is equal to 0. If you take L'Hopital's, you get 1 over 2n, and that would go to 0. Then we have to show that n plus 1 over n plus 1 squared plus 1 is less than n over n squared plus 1. It is. So this is a decreasing function. It's equal to 0. So this series converges by the alternating series test. So this converges at x equals negative 4. Well, what about x equals 4, the other endpoint? So if we plug 4 into the original series, we have sigma, sigma, n equals 0 to infinity of, let's see, got to make sure I get this right, n times 4 to the n over 4 to the n times n squared plus 1, n squared plus 1. Well, in this case, the 4 to the n's are just going to cancel. 
So this becomes the series, n equals zero to infinity, of simply n over n squared plus one. Well, we can compare this to one over n. This is the harmonic series, and so it diverges. Diverges by the p-series test, where p is equal to one. And then we take the limit as n approaches infinity of n over n squared plus one over one over n. That's equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of, oh, let's say n over n squared plus one, but then times n, when you multiply the top and bottom by n, and that's equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of n squared over n squared plus one, and that equals one. So since it's finite and positive, the limit that is, the series, diverges, I almost wrote converges, diverges at x equals four by the limit comparison test. So what can we say about the interval of convergence? Let's sum this all up in a nice tidy package. The interval of convergence is going to be negative four to four. We can include the negative four, but we can't include the four. If we look at back at what we've done, at four, uh, the series diverges, so we don't want to include the four. But when we plugged in negative four, the series converges by the alternating series test. So we can say that the interval of convergence is negative four, including negative four to four. Now this series converges, absolutely, on negative four to four, and that's what we found earlier. We took uh, the ratio test, and the ratio test will be less than one as long as x is between negative four and four. However, the series converges conditionally at x equals negative four. It does converge at negative four, but it converges only conditionally there.